Many of us, when looking to start or scale our businesses, can easily feel stuck. And especially if this is doing anything bigger than you thought was possible, right? Or something that was a little bit out of your reach. Well, what if I told you that a billionaire was going to give you advice for how to run your business? Would you listen? What's up everyone, my name is Jonathan. I'm the host here at The Jono Show and we not only create videos just like this, book reviews and tech reviews and mindset and business, motivation videos, but we also have an incredible podcast. So if you haven't checked it out, I encourage you to go ahead, check out that playlist. We interview some incredible, incredible people, business leaders, professionals and all walks of life. We've had sex therapists on, we've had people who've worked with Elon Musk and the Pope and all sorts of incredible guests. So I encourage you to go check out those podcast episodes, you're not going to want to miss them. All right, for today's book review, we are going over Tillman Fertitta's book, Shut Up and Listen. And in the intro, I said, would you take advice if a billionaire were to give you advice about your business? Would you listen? Well, we're going to shut up and listen to Tillman Fertitta, what he is saying today. Um, I'm going to be going through, I unfortunately have to talk because Tillman's not here to talk for us, but I'm going to be taking us through this book. It is a fairly short book. Uh, it's hardback. I absolutely love hardback books, um, but you see this, this has endorsements on the back from Tom Brady, James Harden, uh, Michael Milken, Yao Ming, Adam Silver, Brian Sullivan. I mean, this book is loaded with star studded uh, people that are endorsing it. So highly recommend you check it out. If you haven't heard of Tillman Fertitta, I'm not really surprised because he doesn't have this monster presence on social media, but he is a business mogul in every sense of the word. Uh, if you've heard of CNBC's billion dollar buyer, uh, Tillman Fertitta is there. He is the sole owner of the Houston Rockets. He is the owner of Landry's, which is a whole restaurant group that owns a bunch of different restaurants, including Bubba Gum Shrimp Co. and a, a ton of different restaurants. I can't even name them all off. Uh, he also is the owner of five Golden Nugget Casinos, and he's got so many different businesses under his belt. He's loaded with experience. So I'm really excited to read this book, not only because of all the things I just mentioned, but also because I love service businesses. And this book, I feel like, was written for service businesses. Um, you know, he's talking about hospitality. He talks about leadership. He talks about knowing your numbers. Uh, let's let's just get right into it here. Um, like I said, about 150 pages. Very, very readable. You can tell the book's not super thick. And it's divided up into five sections. Section number one is hospitality. Two, you'd better know your numbers. Three, the 95-5 rule. Four, see the opportunity, seize the opportunity. And five, live your leadership. He's going to cover all of those different topics and he weaves his story throughout. So he talks all about how he started his first business and then later on as he kind of graduated to some bigger business decisions. Um, I love this first chapter though, because I'm passionate about hospitality, being in the hospitality industry myself and owning staffing companies and different businesses. But I love that he talks about hospitality making a difference and mattering regardless of what your business is. I think so many people have the misconception that if you're not in a service-based business, you know, you don't have to focus on that as much. And I actually think that is an incredible falsehood. I think that service is the one thing that differentiates many products and obviously services, but products because, you know, we're quickly getting to the place where products look pretty similar. I mean, our phones look pretty similar, um, books right? Uh, education, school, a bunch of different things look very, very similar. Phone providers, right? What's the biggest thing that makes a difference to us though? It's the service we receive as we're using the product. And so he talks about that. And I think that that was a, a huge takeaway that I had immediately when I first read this. Um, so yeah, section one, hospitality. Chapter one, hospitality matters no matter the business. He talks about, you know, this whole th thing about if they want scrambled eggs and this whole scrambled egg story that he tells is so important because I feel like I've been in a situation before. I mean, have you ever been in a drive-through or some sort of scenario where you wanted something and they had just ended the breakfast time or they had just ended lunch or they had just ended, you know, they just started closing and they said, no, I'm sorry, we can't help you. Well, obviously from the business perspective, you know, you need to have rules and systems and standards, but he talks about to actually understand and actually be able to serve your clients, you need to be ready to serve them regardless of the time of day. And so he talks about, you know, if someone wants eggs and it's 20 minutes past, make them the eggs. 
You know, the cost of actually making those eggs and the little deviation outside of the systems is not that great compared to the negative review or rating that you're going to receive. And that's a big component of what he talks about here. Uh, take the word no out of your damn vocabulary and cater to the masses, not the classes. Uh, those are the sections, the chapters that are in that first section. Section number two is you better know your numbers. And I think this is especially important right now being not, I wouldn't say post COVID, but being in an environment now, a business environment that is adjusted to a world that's very different. And I think a lot of the businesses, certainly the businesses that were uh, have struggled the most, were ones that didn't really know their numbers. They didn't know their profit margin. They didn't know, you know, the place that they were in financially. And he talks about that, the importance of having working capital. So many businesses die because of undercapitalization. And so that is, is really, really an important a topic to know, just knowing your numbers in general, property leases. Um, and I think that is something interesting right now, especially, you know, if you are not able to renegotiate your property lease or you're locked into a lease and now this whole pandemic hit and people are staying home and your business model is changing, you're forced to go online more, or maybe you're not able to, uh, you know, serve people in your current location and you're stuck in a lease, you can't renegotiate, you're going to be really stuck. And he goes over some of those details there, um, but definitely a very powerful powerful section for the type of economy that we're in right now. Chapter three, the 95 five rule, what's your five? So he talks about this thing that most business owners he talks to are good at 95% of the things you do, but it's only by being focused on the 5% that you're actually going to get better. And I think this is so important because as business owners, especially when we're, we've seen some level of success, it's easy to focus on everything that's going right but we really have to focus on what's that 5%, what's that little bit that we can consistently be getting better every single day. And I think it's more than just a decision by the owner to think like that, but it's a decision that you have to instill into company culture so that everyone has that same mindset. Um, partner with Complementary Strengths, uh, chapter nine, really, really incredible for any entrepreneur who's looking to not live in their business 20, 24 seven. You've got to find people to partner with who have complementary strengths and weaknesses to yours so you can fill in the gaps for each other. Section four, see the opportunity, seize the opportunity, and this is a good one. He talks about how he had this five-year reprieve from paying some taxes or paying some interest on some loans that he had. And he talks about his different cycles of business. And I think that this is such an important chapter right now, especially for all of us business owners. Um, I actually wanna go to the spot because there's a, a area um, oh, here we go. He says, listen, when things are bad, we often tend to forget that they're going to be good again. Further, when things are good, we tend to forget that they're going to be bad again. You need to be prepared for both types of situations because they're both headed your way sooner or later. So I think, again, so many of us who at the end of 2019 thought that everything was going awesome. We were building our businesses at these rapid paces. We were making, maybe taking on more expenses than we normally had, you know, and then all of a sudden, March comes and everything gets shut down. You know, understanding that these bad times are not gonna last forever if you're in a business that's struggling, but then when things are going good, realize that the good times aren't gonna last forever. And knowing how to appropriately leverage the good things that are happening in your business to kind of create that little bit of a rainy day fund and allow you to save up for when the bad times come back around will be massively impactful for you to kind of consistently step up in your business life rather than just stay flat. So absolutely love that. That's a good little listen box. He actually has a bunch of these throughout uh, little, little breakouts and you can kind of see right here. There are these little breakout pieces that give his little thought on, on things. And I, for one, really like that as a breakup in the reading helps kind of keep things more interesting for me. Um, definitely have some ADD. So that's filling in there. Uh, section five is live your leadership. If you want to lead, listen first is chapter 13. And I think this is so important for leaders. I think as a leader, it's easy to talk a lot. It's easy to have the loudest voice in the room. It's easy to allow your knowledge, allow your expertise, allow your education, whatever it is to carry you and to have you be this big wave and this big force in your organization. When in fact, I think a much more powerful approach is to listen. A much more powerful approach is to ask that question that helps identify problems and helps people solve the problems, maybe even on their own, right? But that's definitely a talent and I think listening to people, listening to the people around you, listening to your clients, listening to your guests, listening to the people who are in your ecosystem can give you a lot of cues for how you need to have your next steps. Be a great teacher and change, change, change. Um, 
So conclusion is don't choose to quit, choose to keep punching. And this is a theme that he talks about throughout the book. And I think a theme that you're gonna see throughout a lot of the books that we read, you have to have determination, grit, drive, right? You've got to be committed to the process. There are times when things are going to be down, but there are times when things are going to be massively up. And so you can't allow those dips, those valleys to discourage you from the progress you're making. You've got to stay in pocket. You've got to stay in your lane, stay focused. And regardless of what's going on in the economy, you know, in your business, whatever, you've got to stay focused on what you want that outcome to be and commit to being a little better every single day. So uh, anyway, I would absolutely love for you to go check this book out. Tillman is one of the people who's on my list to have as a guest on our podcast. We haven't had him yet, but it will happen. And uh, I would highly recommend you to pick up this book, especially if you're in the service business. So that's it for me today, folks. Thank you so much for listening. Again, please subscribe. Uh, Make sure you have that alert bell turned on because then you will get notifications all about more uh, book reviews just like this and the other videos we have coming out on this channel. Thanks for being a part of this community and we'll see you guys in the next video.